G'day guys, in this video we're going to cover off on skinning the bottom surface of the right hand wing on the 750 Cruiser. Uh, a bit of a tour around the workshop and a discussion on what is and isn't working. We're about 70 hours in and it's the first week of April 2020. First of April 2020, coronavirus, onto the wings. So I've got all the parts laid out, identified from the, um, like the IPB or the exploded parts view. Um, read through the manual, about to lay things out. I think I'll click out everything together. There's all their ribs, left hand, set of right hands up the front. Identify the spar. So the spar comes from the factory already done uh, with solid rivets, which is good. All the way to the end. And there's a little spar, these bits here, spar, spar extension. It's probably to save a machining cost or something for the one, one sheet of alloy. And rear spars over the back there. So we'll commence um, assembly of the right hand wing. Slow and steady as the cockies fly over. Right hand wing. Nine o'clock on the knocker. That's uh, about two and a half hours. Come out here after dinner on the right hand wing assembly. It's just um, clicoed together at this stage. Oh, well, when I say just, deburred everything, including the um, deburred so it's nice inside the. Uh, lightning holes. I don't know in case you have to reach up through there and do something in the future. But anyway, it's all deburred. Managed to stop cracks, obviously. Um, I went through and labelled all the stations. So 3400, 3060, 2720. That's the distance from the root out. Um, and then labelled the ribs. So there are some differences in the ribs. Um, for example, the tight end point here will go. Um, I've set that rib up and drilled it to, um, if you can imagine that pokes out as your tie down point. Uh, what other differences? This one here is scalloped out for the um, diagonal brace. I had to put a little joggle um, in that one, in this particular rib, which it actually says to do. So it tucks in under this. Um, uh, triangular gusset. Yeah, so all the ribs click out in. I've got my uh, Cortec in there, all numbered. Uh, this particular bay here is for the fuel tank. Fuel tank will go in there. So, the soft side of the ribs, if you like. So, the flange goes inboard, all the rest of them facing outboard. Uh, this little fella here. I have to read up on that, but the um, the angles. I remember someone else having issues on um, in some of the forums. Yeah, not to, might have to get him a whack and stick for that one. Um, there's the root rib. So the wing actually tapers down for those who aren't aware. Um, this is the inboard rib, which is a lot smaller than the first rib. That's actually so when you're in flight, one of the design of Chris Hines is you can look over the top of the wing out through the sunroof when you're in a 30 degree bank turn. Um, yeah, the back of the back of the spar. The spar comes pre-assembled from the factory, um, which is good with all the solid rivets, solid rivets down the bottom. Uh, these are just standoffs. Eventually, I think the cork goes on there for the fore and aft for the 15 gallon fuel tank that will go in each side. So looking pretty good. Uh, it's time to probably go inside and show my face and read up a bit, read ahead as to what's coming up next. And there's the, um, the parts there for the left hand wing. 
So we're 50 hours into the build. Let's uh, sort of go through the manual here. 50 hours in, and we've completed the um, completed the rudder, the fin. When I say completed, up to installation on the fuselage. And then you'll notice these are also the scratch building plans in between, or if you need to replace a part. And the fin is complete. And we did the horizontal stab and the elevator is complete. And more horizontal stab. Flaperons are completed. Now we're on to the wing assembly. So 50 hours in, think I'd get used to it by now. So what happens on the airframe, you get a few parts. Some might come uh, match drilled, whereas others will come like these here, uh, pilot, pilot hole drilled and you have to expand them out. Yeah, you know, pretty simple really. So it starts off with number 40s, um, which are the silver Clecos or 332nd. Um, then you upsize to the copper ones, which are 1 8th or 3.3 millimetre, drill them out with a 3.3 millimetre or 1 8th. And then upsize to a number 20, which is 532nd with the black Clecos. And in the mail today, I just received some gold 316th Clecos or 4.8 or number 12s so and then once that's all finished once you've drilled your holes with either your silver copper gold or black you whack in your a4 or a5 rivets so all pretty good really hey guys all right well it's all going well um got a wing completed here well the skeleton almost completed got the ribs all attached and working on the trailing edge um, a lot of deburring involved in that, so three or four hours of deburring, uh, all the boring stuff, but tonight we get to put it together, so um, it's looking good. I also got myself a, um, I got a Zenith tattoo, um, which I'll reveal later. No, I didn't really. I actually burnt myself leaning over the kettle, believe it or not. But anyway, um, the wing's looking good, this is the right hand wing, and we'll get stuck into it tonight. Morning guys, uh, just right hand wing, bottom surface. So I've been playing with this um, upper strut attachment bracket, this part here. I've got it, well the bolts are just sitting in there just for the sake of this video. But I had that bolted on. Obviously when it comes time for uh, final assembly, the bolts will face, you know, standard practices, have the bolts facing downwards. This one here may have, may have a bit of a clearance issue, so it may have to go inverted. Um, but the other two will definitely, with the washer each side and the nut, We'll bolt that on and cork it up correctly. So this is the um, the wing strut main attachment point. Imagine if the um, the wing strut the wings upside down at the moment. So the strut runs off down there to, or up there to the undercarriage, and then made up this cross member if you like. I had to take off um, to get that to fit nice and snug underneath, or, or it was it was a bit too snug. So. I've, I had to run it, I had to take about 16th of an inch off the top of this L angle, but to also keep my edge distances um, within limits as well. That was just so, um, I was just having trouble getting in initially to get the L angle underneath the strut attachment point. Um, and I guess the other one I've got, I paid more attention to uh, keeping this flat here. Um, because the strut attachment is going to slip over this plate and the the main the main arm here. Um, it does call for a rivet, um, one one rivet to be placed in approximately here. But thinking ahead, if you have a rivet poking out there, the strut's going to slide down over the top of this. The rivet's going to get in the way. Um, I did get the attachment piece and slid it down over the top. Um, some guys on forums etc have said to countersink the rivet but then what do you do with the tail on the other side? I don't want to take too much meat out of this. Um, and then standard practices and the plans actually call for this call it a Jesus bolt if you like so it attaches the, the wings to the fuselage essentially um, through the strut once that's built that's meant to fit up through here and when it's all riveted down there's no way that'll actually there's no way that'll actually fit 
if I clamp that tight, there's no way that bolt, um, if you look there, you can't get that bolt in, in the correct angle. It's clearly shown in the plans. Um, yeah, you want, you'd want the head up with the nut down. Uh, once again, jump online, have a look what other guys are doing. And unfortunately, like it's easy to draw on the plans the right way, but in reality, this this bolt's gonna gonna have to go upside down as well with the head down. But anyway, uh, just a bit of work involved in this. Probably mucked around with that for an hour and a half or so, get it all lined up and correct. Um, took the the leading edge skin off just to gain access. Now it's time to pull apart. Take all the skins off again. Um, you see the leading edges over there, and deburr corrosion con control, and we'll rivet the bottom skin on. All right, guys, we're about uh, 70 hours into the build, I guess. First week in April, just um, daylight savings just finished in Australia, so I've got an extra hour to build now. Um, probably a good time just to show you around with what um, what is working and what isn't working, I guess. Um, so I've just just about to pull those skins off and I've got to clear up a bit so I've got the so I'm building the right hand wing so left hand wings moved over there to my, my document bench um, there's a left hand skin that I got out of the box and the left hand skin up there they're both sitting there so I move those out of the way the right hand skin here so I'll use this as my deburring table while the wing skeleton will sit over here and then I'll have my manuals out as I work along. So that's all going fine. The workbench here out of the box um, has worked out really good. I just got some parts there that I you know, can't forget. Part of the skinning process when we start riveting the wing skin back on. Uh, my compressor. So I made a quiet box. That's just an MDF box. So I've got a two horsepower, you know, just those... This one's from Super Cheap Auto in Australia, so probably Home Depot or something in America. Uh, and my hose reel, it's working out really well. No issues there, it's nice and when I turn the um, compressor on, it's relatively quiet. Um, I get about, with a two horsepower compressor, probably get 15 to 20 rivets that I pop before it kicks in again, use the air. Um, I think an air drill would suck it, you know, suck the air out. A little bit too quick. Um, I've shown you this before. Just got my drills. This is my corrosion control. I just keep the brush, keep the brush uh, moist, just in water, um, and then mix up. I just thin down a bit of the Cortec, just as required. So that's all going well. Uh, meet Stanley. So I went down and um, uh, bought Stanley down at Bunnings. So I just. Um, Flashed out $100 and got a um, just a digital digital level. Takes a lot of guesswork out of it. I'm not trying to line up a um, trying to line up a bubble and just so you can just zero zero it. And um, I've been using that on the wings, which has worked. Uh, sorry, calibrate. Uh, using that on the wings makes it a lot easier, uh, a bit more accurate than trying to. Um, just use a bubble so it tells you when you're crooked or not so that's going well um, these on the wall if people have noticed them in the background so that's my RAF career I did 30 years in the Air Force uh, HS 748s with um, 32 Squadron 79 Squadron over at Pierce with Hawks uh, 36 Squadron 503 wing E and H model Hercules up at RAF Richmond uh, Caribou's at um, Townsville. Also worked on P3s, but president of the social club, and I didn't get a presento off them. But anyway, <clears throat> didn't even get a goodbye. Um, as far as my tools are going, I've got these deburring tools here. This thing here, very aggressive, and I find it hard to use and causes more damage than it's, it's meant to score along the edge. Um, I've sort of given up on that one. It's easy to just use some scouring, some sandpaper. Uh, these deburring tools here, fantastic, as is this little one here. And still got 
got my box full of rivets, <coughs> A6s, my big um, my A3 16th um, Clecos came in, so if you're going to order some you do need a few of those on Clecos, so with the, with the wing all Clecoed up, I've taken a few out this morning, um, I think I ordered 150, well maybe 300 I think I had of each size, um, which seems about enough, and once for once I do the, the second wing, might run a bit low. I've got my um, uh, flapper on arms, just had to put these plates on, uh, did that ahead of time, so they'll um, come out of these slots at the back here. Um, so you can imagine that just hangs out the trailing edge to pick up the flapper rons. So I've got those all deburred and ready to go, waiting for assembly. What they don't show you necessarily, I guess, on the wing um, is the stringers, I'd call it. So on the bottom skin, where these uh, bronze 1 8 Clecos are, running the full length, these, whoops, these are the uh, these are the top stringers, so I just copied the length and in between each rib there is a 90 degree um, L angle, obviously, riveted in there. I'm not actually sure why it's not one long piece a la model aircraft type construction um, or most other aircraft. <clears throat> so there's separate pieces in between the ribs and it might toughen up a bit once, it, um, once it's all riveted. It seems strange, so very time consuming anyway, but you know, a good process. Um, in between each rib, you cut these cut these to length. I've numbered these, uh, number seven. You know, it just happens to be, I think that's seven. Might be that one there. Um, it's numbered on the inside. So they're cut to length. So these will go right there on the top skin when I, put, when I flip the wing over and do the top skin. Obviously fit those on before you lay the top skin down. It'll just give some stiffness to the wing. But there's about um, <clears throat> seven or eight L angles there. Uh, let's have to be drilled and lined up and applied. Uh, fantastic little bench grinder with the Scotch Bright wheel. Doing a great job doing all the deburring. So my process, I guess, if you like, with this with this stock, um, square it up, mark it. I zip it through on the bandsaw, uh, then I come over to my sanding machine uh, when I've got a 90 degree set up, just square up the ends to the correct length, both ends. I can touch it up, touch it off, touch up the edge up there if, if need be on some bigger parts, and then down to the deburrer and just, just polish them up. The process there is working really well. Big bigger parts like this where it's fairly Fairly substantial bit of alloy. Um, I mark the edge with uh, black texter or Nico, or in this case, a um, one of the pens we're using, those black ones, um, and just onto the belt sander to get all the bandsaw marks or whatever they've used at the factory, um, get all the teeth marks off, and it's polished up nicely, get all the stress razors out of those. So, yeah, that's all working really well. I haven't got too many issues, I've got plenty of drills up there, the double-ended ones come in handy. Um, you can see I'm sort of chewing through the drill bits, but I'll keep an eye on that. And I've got these 12-inch ones as well, which are working pretty well. And there's a picture of me in Hawaii with the crew. Uh, so, that's what's going on at the moment, and uh, we'll rip the top skin off and get stuck into it.